thanks for the invitation. And uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be here and uh, uh, show how the Pentagon changed our approach to Toric IOL implementation. Uh, this has been a change that occurred uh, about uh, five years ago when we started analyzing total coronal astigmatism. You know that uh, the Pentagon can give you different corneal powers. Uh, basically, we can use the uh, anterior K1 and K2, which are the traditional simulated keratometry, where the corneal power is, the total corneal power is estimated using the 1.3375 keratometric index, which just gives a, a, a give us a, an estimation of the total corneal power from just the anterior corneal curvature measurements. Alternatively, we can use the total corneal refractive power and astigmatism, which is based on uh, ray tracing through both uh, corneal surfaces. It considers uh, this NELS law of refraction and uh, provides us with the total corneal astigmatism. You can get these measurements in the power distribution display where the keratometric astigmatism, K1 and K2, or SYNK, is shown in the first row, and the total corneal refractive power and astigmatism is shown in the third row. So this is what we usually use for toric uh, calculations. And when dealing with uh, posterior and total corneal astigmatism, what do we know about posterior astigmatism? There have been several studies, and uh, they all agree that, uh, uh, as uh, Professor Conan showed before, uh, in most cases, the posterior steepest meridian is uh, vertically aligned, and such alignment uh, generates an against the rule astigmatism, which partially compensates uh, the anterior with the rule astigmatism and uh, increases the anterior against the rule astigmatism. Here is an example of a, a with the rule astigmatism where K1 and K2 overestimated the total corneal refractive power. Here you see the reading of K1 and K2, which is just uh, one point, which is 1.4 diopters of astigmatism. Then uh, if you take a look at the total corneal refractive power in the third row, you get 0.6, so big difference, almost one diopter from between the keratometric astigmatism on the left and the total corneal astigmatism on the right. And the opposite in this case with an irregular but against the rule astig astigmatism, where you go from 1.9 diopters of astigmatism on the anterior surface to 2.8 astigmatism diopters uh, in the total corneal astigmatism. This makes a difference when selecting the toricity of the IO. And there have been several studies showing the, which is the difference between the keratometric astigmatism, SIMK, uh, and total corneal refractive power. Uh, we did one of these studies showing that uh, the difference uh, between the two is about a quarter of diopters, both in with the rule or against the rule uh, eyes. A difference higher than uh, half a diopter can be found in 16% of eyes, uh, while the difference in the axis is lower. But using average values for, uh, total, for the difference between mm, keratometric and total corneal astigmatism can be misleading because the posterior corneal astigmatism is not fixed. It changes according to the amount, to the magnitude of the anterior corneal astigmatism, as you can see from this graph on the right. And of course, it, on the anterior surface, you have a, a low astigmatism. You also have a low astigmatism on the posterior surface. So, what does, uh, uh, which is the influence on the uh, outcomes of toric IOL implantations? We uh, published in 2015 uh, with Dr. Neyser from Denmark the first study uh, demonstrating that uh, using total corneal astigmatism from Pentacam improves the results over traditional SYNK. And this is a, a real uh, summary of that study. Uh, where you can see that in eyes with the, with the rule astigmatism, if you use K1 and K2, you get an overcorrection of astigmatism of more than, one di of more than half a diopters, uh, uh, 0.59. And in against the rule eyes, you get an undercorrection of 0.3 diopters. While if you don't use K1 and K2, but use total corneal refractive power, the average difference, the average error, sorry, is 
close to zero in both cases. So this was the first uh, vectorial demonstration of the improvement uh, of toric-IOL calculations uh, using total corneal astigmatism. And this is uh, an example where you see that uh, with the uh, K1 and K2 have a 0.7 diopters astigmatism and with total corneal astigmatism 1.2, this is against the rule, we implanted the T3 IOL, which corrects in this case about 1.06 diopters at the corneal plane instead of then a T2 and got a, a planar refraction. And an opposite case where you get 2.7 diopters of astigmatism with the rule with more than one devices. And if you see with the Pentacam SYNC A is the same 2.8 diopters, but if you take a look at the TCRP, you get 1.8, so one diopter less. In this case, we selected a, a T5 using uh, the IOL calculator available on the Pentacam AXL, where you can select, as you can see here, the IOL model. You can select the IOL formula. You get a pre uh, the predicted power and refraction of the spherical equivalent. Then you can select the toric calculator. The Savini toric calculator uses the value that I showed you before in the um, power distribution, which is the three millimeter diameter reading centered on the pupil using the zone and not just the ring. So this is automatically used to predict the toricity and the, asti and the uh, refractive astigmatism. And uh, in this case, uh, we got a planar refraction using a T5 rather than a T6, which was indicated by SYNC-K. So the last two mm, uh, slides uh, to show the comparison to the Barrett calculator, because there have been some studies uh, suggesting that uh, using an estimated total coronal astigmatism, like the one calculated by Barrett may lead to better results than direct measurements of total corneal astigmatism by Schenfeld cameras. And uh, with the latest uh, software update provided by Oculus, uh, we found that uh, um, these measurement, measurements be, um, results using the Toric uh, Barrett calculator and the Pentacam direct measurements are uh, almost the same, as you can see from this uh, slide, where the mean absolute error in toric power was 0.65 with the Pentacan TCRP and 0.55 with the Barrett. But if you look at the number, uh, the percentage of eyes with an absolute error lower than 0.75 diopters, the percentage is almost the same, and the centroid error was slightly better with the TCRP by Pentacan. So in conclusion, I believe that cortal, uh, we showed that total corneal astigmatism improves the results of cylinder correction with respect to K1 and K2 simulated keratometry. Uh, with the Savini's toric calculator, it's easy to make this calculation because everything is automatic on the Pentacam AXL. And uh, the results are very close to those uh, of Barrett, but in this case, we have direct measurements and not estimation. Thanks, that's all. <laughs>